Hi, it's Miskella again, and this is chapter eight of Spider Bots Rising. This chapter is called RNA. They left the beak behind them, lying alone on the forest floor. If the sunbirds were coming back for it, they didn't want to be there to meet them. They hurried on through the twisted trees. By this point, the trees were so tightly entwined that there was no more footpath at all. They found their way by following the glowing webbed threads. The more of them there were, the dream seeker believed, the closer they were getting. But what exactly it was they were getting closer to, she didn't know. Nor did she know if they should be running towards it or away from it. Okay, the dream seeker said, let's go over this again. We know the spider bots are building or uh, weaving something called the World Wide Web. Yep, Chuck said. And we know that it must be very large, Abby added, because of the amount of imaginium it has taken and the long period for construction. Yep, Chuck said. And it's got something to do with bringing people together, the dream seeker went on, or sticking people together, or weaving the dreamscape together. That's where it all gets a little fuzzy, but we know the council thinks it means trouble. And it looks like the sunbirds agree. Honestly, I don't even wanna think about what sort of thing could spook those creeps. Yep, Chuck said. Or walking towards something that gives nightmares to my nightmares. Dream seeker, next time you sign up for a deathly dangerous quest, remind me to stay home. Wait, Abby said, stopping suddenly. I sense sp sp spider bots close, coming closer, fast. There, her head swiveled to the left just as three spider bots crashed through the trees. No, the dream seeker cried, leaping forward. But before she could do anything, the spider bots closed ranks. They acted in perfect unison. All at once, each spider bot grabbed one of them and held them in their steely grip. The dream seeker felt the bot's cold, strong legs close around her rib cage and legs. She struggled but couldn't move. She saw the others pinned as well, and then they were moving. The trees flashed past an amazing pace. The spider bot's many legs picked through the tangled roots quickly and with ease. The dream seeker couldn't see anything besides streaks of green light and tree trunks vanishing behind them. She could hear Abby and Chuck trying to reason with the bots. Chuck was yelling many words one should not use in polite company, but Abby had a different tactic. She was spouting a rapid stream of robotic beeps and buzzes. From what the dream seeker could tell, she was speaking in their language. Neither of them got any response. It was like the bots couldn't hear them. Their red sensor stared straight ahead and they charged on. Finally, they reached a gigantic clearing. Inside the clearing was a dwell. It was much bigger than the nesting dwell Abby had brought them to. Much, much bigger. A shiver ran down the dream seeker's spine. A high pitched hum filled her ears. Every single tree around its edges was draped in the glowing webs. They created a ring of unsettling green light that touched everything within it. Strange machines stood all around. Some of them were covered in a small colored light that blinked on and off. Some of them had screens that shuddered and flashed. Bold words blazed across the screen like silent screams. Obey ready, scan, but most of the machines were dark and lifeless. Their blank black screens seemed to suck light in. Spider bots of shapes and kinds the dream seeker had never seen were crawling over everything. Two tall ones with large fan-shaped tanks on their backs stood before them like a wall. Circular monitors were set into the middle of those tanks. Each one stared out at them like a dark round eye. Worst of all was the huge spider bot sitting right in the middle of it all. It was larger than all the others by far, bigger than a car, bigger than two cars. It had a large gold tank on its back and one giant green eye in the middle of its head. Its legs were made of some perfectly smooth, shiny metal. Its pincers were tipped with gold. The spider bots that had been holding Chuck, Abby, and the dream seeker suddenly dropped them. They scrambled to their feet. Well, 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 the giant spider said. Its voice was like a thousand TVs all turned to the same channel. Look who the council sent to check on us. 
some kind of tough guy bunny rabbit, a child and a defect. How cute. Who are you? The dream seeker demanded. And what is all this? She clenched her fists at her sides to stop them from shaking. She hoped she sounded braver than she felt. Oh, the little one is feisty, the bot said. It shifted slightly and a loud clanking echoed through the clearing. I am RNA and this, it waved all at all the lights and screens, is the start of something that you are now too late to stop. We know about the World Wide Web, the dream seeker said, looking up into the spider bot's one shining eye. Oh, you do, do you? RNA responded. Do you know that it is going to be the largest network the dreamscape has ever seen? Do you know that it will connect every creature and reverie in this realm? When it is done, there won't be a dream idea or story that cannot be shared across time and space. RNA grew louder as he spoke. But why would you want that? The dream seeker asked. Something wasn't adding up. Why is this World Wide Web so important to the spider bots? Just think of it, you tiny fool, RNA boomed. The ability to share all data, all information, everything and everyone connected through technology. You could speak to people who have never spoken, see things no one has ever seen. It's like magic, but it's better than magic because we made it ourselves. Aren't those good enough reasons for spider bots to be interested, to create something beautiful and help all of dream kind? Not in my experience, Chuck called from behind the dream seeker. Not for most spider bots, at least. RNA creaked and buzzed with horrid laughter. You're right, he crowed. Of course, there's more than that in it for us. We spider bots are not stupid creatures. We are perfect machines. We do not seek to help those weaker than us. We only seek to take the power we deserve. But how are you going to do that? The dream seeker said, feeling anger rise inside her. How is the World Wide Web going to help you get that power? Sadly, that is not for you to know, puny dream seeker. This clearing was the birthplace of the World Wide Web, but it has outgrown this forest. It was only ever an early testing ground. My eight-legged brothers and sisters have moved the web somewhere with more room, more power. RNA slowly began to move closer. Every heavy step sent a shudder through the ground. The dream seeker stepped back and craned her neck up as RNA loomed above her. His large metallic head blocked out the glow around them. His sharp pincers glinted. You will never find the place where the web is now hidden and you will never discover its true power. And even if you did, you are not strong enough to stop us. Swarms of spider bots guard it more than you can imagine. But don't worry, he said, rearing up his back legs, ready to strike. I will end this silly quest of yours right now. And then he attacked. And that is the end of our chapter. Wow. Okay. Not only can you make some incredible predictions, what a cliffhanger. And then he attacked. Do you think that the author left us with a good cliffhanger or a bad cliffhanger? What are your thoughts? If you were to rewrite the end of this chapter and end it a different way, how would you do it? If you have a friend, you can share with them or you can write it down. I'm excited to hear your thoughts. Thank you for reading long and I will see you all next time.